Hello everyone. Welcome to Kristen Kelly TV. I'm your host, Kristen Kelly. So today I'm going to be talking about a story. The story is shocking. The story is filled with death and mayhem and murder. Okay, it's not really filled with murder or death, but it is a very juicy, gossipy story. So let's get into it. Please make sure you like my video and you subscribe and you leave me a comment. I really appreciate that. So Danny Victor of the Victor Twins, I wish I was a twin. I wish I could be like Kristen of the Kelly Twins. Imagine if there was two of me, how insane would that be? <laughs> Uh, okay, so she has a podcast, which I really had no idea was even like that popular. I had never even heard of this podcast before. I don't really even know much about podcasts, to be honest. Um, but damn, I feel like I should make a podcast after getting like back the response. So I was on Snapchat. So my Snapchat is Miss Chris Kelly. And on Snapchat, I was having people like DM me and DM me and DM me and DM me and they were like, Kristen, please talk about the millions that you got from your settlement from Oxygen. And this is Diamond, my newest dog. Diamond, say hello to everyone. Hello everyone, I'm Diamond. Diamond's a very good girl. Diamond's a four month old Doberman. She's a very good girl. Yes, she is. And here is your bone for being good. Annie Victor on her podcast she talked about, I guess somebody had come on and they had sued Oxygen. So then she had said, oh, well, I don't know this for a fact, but Kristen from season five of Bad Girls, she was actually drugged in Jamaica. And then after she was drugged, um, she they took her back to the house and she essentially got beat up. And then she sued Oxygen for millions of dollars. So I'm here to tell you the cold, hard truth. First, we're gonna do a story time. We're gonna talk about the actual incident that happened. So to give everyone a little bit of like what was going on at that time, we were not in Jamaica, we were in Key West. So we were in Key West and things were very weird in like the household. So, and honestly, I'm not even sure like what of this was on the show because I didn't even really watch the show. Um, I lived it, so I didn't really feel like I had to watch it. I definitely did see some of the show, but I don't even know if I saw all the episodes. Mainly I saw a lot of clips and that was really like about it. So we're going back 10 years. Bad girl time machine. So at the time we were filming in Miami. However, for the weekend, we had gone to Key West. Leah at the time had extremely low self-esteem. And I would, I have to say that this is something I have noticed. I'm not saying that everyone who is an only child deals with this, but I have met only children that were men and none of them really seem to have this issue. But every single person I have met that was an only child that was a girl has had this same kind of like attitude where you really could tell that they were an only child just like um really self-centered uh really egotistical like thinks the world revolves around them doesn't really care about other people uh doesn't really understand like the value of friendship and um Essentially, like, Leah at the time really did not care about anybody but her, Leah. So there was a bouncer who I really thought was, like, handsome. And if you watched Bad Girls Club my season, I, there was nobody. Like, I literally, like, Leah was having, like, she was hooking up and having threesomes. There was all this crazy stuff going on. And I really was not interested in anyone. Like, I'm just, like, not that type of person that I will just, like, jump on a dick really quick. Like that's just not my personality. Um, and Leah very much so was that personality. So at the time, um, there was a bouncer, or not bouncer, there was a security guard on our team who I like really thought was handsome. And I had mentioned to Leah like, oh, I think the security guard is so handsome. 
And then it was like almost immediately of me saying that, that she was like, I'm gonna go for the security guard. And then like within that same day of me saying, oh, he's so handsome, she was like, he gave me his number. And just things like that. Like there was just like little things, like there was a girl, Ashley, who was on the show who like met a guy and was kissing him. And then all of a sudden Leah was kissing him. Like that was just very much so her personality was that she was just, like, I don't know her now. I don't know, I hope she's doing better, but at the time it was very clear that she had very low self-esteem and she like really wanted attention, let that be good or bad. She just like wanted attention from people. So at the time, and this is the thing is like, I have a big heart and even though I see flaws in people, I still am like, oh my God, like I want to help you and I want to be your friend just because like we all go through stuff. So um, at the time, I just honestly couldn't deal with Leah anymore. Like that particular day, it was just really getting to be too much. Um, and the whole security guard thing was really what just like tipped it off for me. I just like couldn't hang out with her. So Christina, who was a replacement on my season, was like, hey girl, like let's just drink. And the thing that I like love, I loved about Christina, I'm gonna use everybody in past tense once they're dead just because this was 10 years ago. Like, I don't know what the hell people are doing now. The thing that I loved about Christina was that she was like very much so, like she was like me, like she would see that somebody like wasn't feeling great or like wasn't like emotionally doing well. I was like, hey, like, let's just like, like, like we don't gotta talk about it, let's just go drink. So Christina was like, let's go get effed up, let's go drink. So we like, were in Key West and can I just say that people absolutely hated us. Like every single place we went, like when we were in Jamaica, people hated us. When we were in Miami, people hated us. Like people just hated us. Like, like something about just that time zone, it was 2010, like people just like really hated reality TV. Jersey Shore was on, there was just like a lot, and Jersey Shore was filming at the same time in Miami that we were. So like people really didn't know, like even if they didn't know the Bad Girls Club, they knew Jersey Shore and they knew they hated it and they knew that we were trash because somehow we were on that. So like we were in this bar and we were just taking shots and there was like these old people there and they were just like grilling us, like giving us dirty looks, like calling us like fat whores. They were just like saying all stuff. And Christina and I were just like, da 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 da, like dancing and drinking and just like having a great time. And then these these sailors came up to us pretty much and they were like, oh, like we got fake tattoos. Like they put like one of them put a fake tattoo on me or talking to them. And then the producer comes over to them and he's like, hey guys, if you're gonna like, you know, talk to the girls, you need to sign these waivers that you're gonna be on the show. And one of the guys, the one who ended up drugging me, was like, no, was like, no, I'm not gonna sign a waiver. And some of his other friends were like, no, we're not signing waivers. There was like a few that were like, yeah, sure. Um, but pretty much, so we're talking to these guys. And then at some point, this sailor guy drugged me. And I have been drugged before. And you, every type of drug is different, but you know that you're drugged because it's not the same pattern of how you normally act when you're drunk or you're under the influence. Like, I'll give you a little example. I got drugged when I was 21, so before Bad Girls Club, at a New Year's party. I was at this New Year's party and I was talking to this guy. And this, uh, the guy that owned the house, who I thought was a friend, I saw him making my drink. And this is the thing is they always say like, you know, watch who's making your drink. So I saw him like making the drink cause I was talking to him and then he put the cup down and he put the straw in it. And I know when he put the straw in it, he put drugs in my drink because I had that one cocktail and then I had one beer and which is not a lot of alcohol. And I couldn't stand. Like I remember I was talking to my friend Daniela and I was like, Daniela, I can't stand it, but I like couldn't even say that. And her cousin, thank God, who was like this big, you know, like six, 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 seven guy was with her. He grabbed my drink and he was drinking it too. So he actually got just as like drugged as I was. And we both like couldn't stand. I almost fell in a fire pit. Like it was like, I had fallen and my leg was bleeding and I like couldn't even say that. Like I was like, I was like trying to tell the people I was with. Like it was really like I had paralysis. Like I could not move. So I know what it feels like to be drugged. So this guy at some point slipped something in my drink and his behavior was very erratic. And he was also, I believe on drugs or gave himself like the same drugs. Cause that actually is something that like guys will do, I guess, which I didn't really know about till after is they'll take like GHB or they'll take like the date rape drug so that they'll like get more effed up. So at some point, 
I remember the guy was like just really being aggressive with me. Like I remember he grabbed my shoulder and I remember he grabbed my arms. Like he was like grabbing me. Like I remember he was like, like we're going here, like and grabbing me. And the producers and like the film crew really did not step in. Like that's not their job. They like they very like they were all very friendly with us and nice, but it was not their job to like be security. And when the, there was this guy, his name was Jonathan, and he was the producer, um, or not producer, what was he? I don't even know. He was, I guess it was the director, he was the director. Um, so he had like, so he was standing there, and at some point he came up to me. He was like, Kristen, do you need me to get this guy away from you? And I was like, so, I very slightly remember this happening. And I was like so out of it. I just remember being like, like I couldn't even like talk. Like I didn't know where it was. And then the producers, so we had really great producers. And this is the thing is that after my season, I believe it was the the next season or maybe it was seven, I don't know. It was my the season after me or the following season, the producers that we had who were the producers for the whole time, they left the show. And it changed in the way that I really do feel like the producers that were on my season did really care about us. They cared about our safety, they cared about our health. They wanted to make like a fun show, but they didn't want to put us in harm's way. The seasons after us, I really don't think that they cared about the girls. And this is just from me talking to many of the girls. I actually never met those producers um, and I wasn't on the show, so I can't speak from personal experience. But what I can say is that other girls who were on other shows after they had talked about so amber mead who was one of my closest friends she was on all-star battles and she said that at one point they got the girls like really wet like they had them in a pool and they like were making them like get wet like they kept like hosing them and they were all really freezing and cold and they just wanted towels and they wouldn't let them go into the house to get towels and they wouldn't bring them out towels it was kind of just they were like f you like just stand there you know so they, they didn't really care about the girls, where on my season, I really do feel like the producers really did care about us and they really did, like they were good guys. And I do think that if they had stayed with the show, the show would have gone on to done better things. So um, at one point, one of the producers, he was pretty much just like something's not right like we've seen this girl drunk multiple times and she like she doesn't know what's going on like i was literally in a different world like when i say that i had no idea that was going on i had no idea what was going on so um which is like really really scary to think about um and i don't drink alcohol anymore and I think that one of the reasons I loved drinking alcohol was because I really liked that it like made me kind of feel like that because I had post-traumatic stress and before I got medication and before I got like my life straight, I, I enjoyed that. But so I would drink quite heavily, like I was a binge drinker and these producers saw like this girl who was a binge drinker is literally like incoherent, like she doesn't know what's happening. So one of the producers, he told me this later, that he went up to the guy, so he said that the guy was grabbing me and pulling me into an alleyway. That he literally like had his arm around me and was dragging me into an alleyway. And before that happened, the producers and the camera crew were like, she is on a show, she has to stay like with us. And the guy was like trying to get me into different like, places like we couldn't go into some bars like it has to be approved and he was like trying to get me into bars and trying to get me into places where there were no um where they like where that they couldn't go pretty much so at one point i guess the guy had me and was dragging me into a like so in key west they it's a very weird setup um 
there's like tiny little bars and restaurants like everywhere, like everywhere. And so you'll be walking like down like a corridor kind of, and there's like bars and restaurants and bars and restaurants. And I guess he was dragging me like in an alleyway. And the producer ran up to him and was like, don't touch her, leave her alone and grabbed me. And I guess the guy like got scared and turned around and ran. And he said when he was running, he was barefoot. So this guy at some point like lost his shoes, I guess, or took off his shoes. I don't know. Like that is like the situation that we're in. I'm just trying to tell you like how insane everything happened. So, um, I did not know where I was and I really thought that I was being kidnapped and I know that like there was actually at one point where in my mind I was like suck your thumb because if these kidnappers see you sucking your thumb they're going to feel bad that they're kidnapping you like that really is where my brain was like I really was not like I like I really thought I was gonna be murdered. So the crew was trying to get me into the van and I was screaming for help. Like I'm screaming, I'm fighting with them. Like I really thought that I was like, that I was going to be killed. Like that really was um, a very scary and real thing that happened in my mind. And a lot of that has to do with, I was mugged when I was in Paris, when I was 21. And that incident like really affected me. I was pistol whipped in Paris by a group of essentially like street thugs and I was with a friend and then it was just the whole thing was, was really crazy. Uh, it's like a very long and traumatic story but that happened when I was 21 and this was happening when I was 23 so it really was not that big of a time difference. So. They get me and they calm me down. And then this guy, I forget, totally forgot his name. He was like the super nice Jewish guy who was in charge of our money. He was like, I'm gonna take her. So the, like the room that they had us in, if you saw the, the show, it was like this very tiny, like almost like studio that they had us in for this vacation. There was no AC. And I was like, just, I was just dying. So he was like, I'm gonna stay with you. So literally he was like, and I was like, I need food. So he like went and got me like pizza crust or something. So he was sitting on the couch and I literally just like had my head like on his like lap because I really was just like, I felt safe at that moment. And that was like the only time I had felt safe this whole time. So I was like coming out of being drunk. I was coming out of the drugs, but I was still drugged. And then when the girls came home, and I, I don't even know what we were fighting about. I think I was upset that they had left me, but in all honesty, like I was very, very drunk. Um, and I really don't even remember like what that fight with Leah was about. Like, I think it was just a combination of everything. It was a combination of me being s s like sick of being like the good friend and having her kind of like really showboating, like really thinking she was like better than everybody else. If you saw the, reunion like Leah looked like a cartoon character like she was like it was very weird because this girl really like I really love the pinup style and I really love like the 1920s 1940s 1950s like 1960s like honestly even some of the 70s is like my jam and she was like really not like that like she was like very basic like I don't mean a basic person I mean like basic like in her attire and then when we were at our our um the shoot for the poster the lady had like done her in like a pinup look with like a red lip and it was like that was like a turning point for Leah she was like a very cool person and then it was just like she became way too big for her britches at that moment in time like it really was so I think the fight really was just like me being like over everything I mean I don't really 100% know because this was 10 years ago I'm just giving you like my synopsis of what I think it was at this point in my life so, um, the next, so after the fight, they had taken me to a hotel room, which by the way, a little, little fact, um, I had been in a hotel room that one of the producers had told me more times, like three times more than anyone else had ever been on the show. Because normally when you went to a hotel room, you didn't come back, but they like liked me so much that I would go to a hotel room and then I would come back. Like it was, I don't know, it was just funny. Um, so, um, they took me to a hotel room and then I believe it was the following day. I just really was not doing well. Um, 
I had a concussion, I was throwing up, I couldn't see straight, I, a lot of things that come with alcohol poisoning, but also being drugged. So the same guy from the day before, the one who was like in charge of our money, I totally don't remember his name and I feel really bad because he was such a nice guy. Um, but he took me to the hospital and they did a CAT scan. They gave me, um, oh my God, what is that medicine that everybody gets addicted to? It was like high, oh my God, high, oh my God, what is the name of that medicine that everyone gets addicted to? Like, it's with a C, I think, like, Percocets? It's like not, it's like a different name for Percocets. I don't even know. It's the same thing. So when I got my breast done, they gave me a bottle of it. And my mom literally like, who was very against me getting my boobs done, took out one of the pills and was like, this is the only one you can have. And then took the others away because she was like, I don't want you to get addicted to like pain pills. Um, but when that had happened, I had taken that and I threw up when I was like 18. So they gave it to me and I said to the guy, I think I'm allergic to these to the nurse and he was like no like take this like you're in a lot of pain blah 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 so I did that and they found out a lot of stuff they found out my nose had been broken they found out um I had deviated septum they found out that I had a concussion um they did lab work and found out that I had been drugged like they had I was at the hospital for a really long time with this guy so after um, they had requested me back in the hotel room and I had written that letter to Leah and I wrote that letter to Leah really just writing that to Leah. I didn't write that letter to anyone else and when I had written that letter, I had got, I wrote the letter, put it in the envelope and gave it to, I forget who, but I gave it to somebody. I was like, can you just give it to Leah? I didn't give that thinking that they were going to make me come back in the show and read that. So it was very hard when people were like, oh, Kristen's so fake. And she's like fake crying, coming back and like reading this letter. Like that was not my intention. I wrote that letter from my heart for her, uh, just for her. I didn't write it for the show. And essentially I was just apologizing to her and when they had like brought me back to read it like that was just such like a weird moment and that was pretty much one of the only moments in the show that I did feel kind of like violated like they had taken something that really wasn't meant to be like a spectacle and they kind of like made it a spectacle um so here is what happened after that so after that things that really made me kind of just like despise the other girls was that I don't care how much you don't like someone. If somebody is drugged or raped or hurt or something like that happens that really was not in their control. Like, yes, I was drinking, but I didn't ask to be, you know, like drugged and things could have gotten a lot worse. The girls literally victim blamed me like to no extent. Like you're a drunk, you're an alcoholic, you're crazy, nobody drugged you, like nobody drugged you, you weren't there. So they really made it seem like I just didn't want to take accountability for my actions, which really wasn't the case. So that really did affect me and hurt me quite a bit. Um, so after that, this, and this is like where I believe the whole, um, suing thing comes into play is I did an interview for Radar and when they had originally told me about it, and this is the thing is that the Radar in line was very kind to me like they would have parties and invite me and stuff and they do this because they want to like smooth you and get you like oh we're friends like we're friends like you can tell us anything and at one of these parties one of the girls had said to me because it was I had tweeted about being drugged and it had been on Perez Hilton which I don't even know if Perez Hilton's like a big deal anymore, but it was a very big deal at the time. So she kind of was like, hey, like I saw that thing on Perez Hilton, like blah, 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 like we'd love to like get your side of it. So I was like, okay. So I went in there to talk to them and I didn't realize that it was being filmed. And I even said to the girl, I was like, oh, I didn't realize this was being filmed. Like I really just thought that we were like just talking. So they put out this interview that I did and it was almost immediately I got a call from Oxygen's lawyers and the guy said, we saw your Radar Online interview and you were not drugged. And I said, but I, you were not drugged. And I said, okay. 
Like that was it. Like that was literally the conversation is he called me to tell me that I was not drugged. And he said, don't do any more interviews. And that's it. Um, and I said, okay, nobody ever said they were going to sue me. And I never said I was going to sue them ever. Um, I did really have hope that I was going to be on a bad girl spinoff and not even a spinoff. So I had actually done a sizzle reel. So a sizzle reel is like a tiny little, like, I don't know, compilation of your life. Um, for oxygen and I had gone, now that I look back at it, I honestly can't even believe that all of that happened. I had gone to many interviews and meetings with like this production company and I was getting my own TV show and I had gone over stuff with lawyers. Like it was like, I was like gonna be a Kardashian. But in my mind, I really didn't think it was like that big of a deal. Now that I look back at it, it was like a huge deal and I should have taken it more seriously. And if I did, I probably would have gotten that show. Um, and it was soon after all of that happened that I think that they looked at me like I was a liability and they canceled like all, and I remember like getting that phone call. It really was like the worst moment of my life. It was like January, like within the first few days of January. And I just remember it was like somebody telling you, oh, you're gonna be a Kardashian, you're gonna have your own TV show, going from that and me like, like going through the contracts, like the contracts being like, you're gonna make all of this money per episode. And you're gonna make all these episodes and you think like, I'm gonna be this big star. And then it was like, oh, no, never mind, take that away. Um, so that happened. And then they were gonna do love games and they had brought me in for all of these like meetings for love games. And the thing is, is that I'm not like saying other people, I'm not like slut shaming other people. But I am somebody who on my season, I didn't talk to guys. I didn't really have any interest in guys. Like I'm more so about like hitting up with friends, having a good time. And they wanted me to be like promiscuous. Like they, their questioning was very weird. Um, and I had gotten the like vibe that they wanted me to be like wild and crazy and sleeping with guys and like, you know, over here, over there. And that's just not who I am. Um, so I did not get cast in that, but I was very close. And then for all stars, that's like a whole other story, but I really thought that I was going to be on all stars and that didn't work either. Um, so I don't know if I was blacklisted because of, you know, the radar online interview or coming out about being drugged. I don't know. Um, but I do know that oxygen was really pissed off that I had done that. Did I ever sue them? No, I never sued them. I've actually never sued anyone. And just like FYI, you can find out if people have sued people if you just really Google people's names. Um, it's like public record in the United States, like being sued, suing people and all of that. Um, am I mad that Danny talked about me on her podcast? No, not really. Um, I was a radio host on, on After Buzz for many years. And that's just like part of the game. Like you just talk about people that were like in past episodes and stuff. She had said that I could come on her podcast if I wanted. Um, well, A, we're in a pandemic. B, I live in Boston. Um, I have nothing against Danny. I really don't. And I don't really know her very well. My only thing is that Amber Mead is really one of the sweetest human beings that I have ever met. Like Amber is such a good and pure human being that she's not saying she's a puppy, but she very much so reminds me of a puppy. Like in, in how pure her soul is. Like Amber is just such a good person. And Gabby has, not Gabby, I'm sorry, Gabby's very nice. Danny has been extremely rude to Amber. And Amber has even said to me like, oh, you know, it's not a big deal, blah, blah, blah. And for me, anybody who is mean to Amber is just like on my shit list as a human being because she is such a good and pure and wonderful person that I don't even understand how somebody could be mean to her. And at one of the reunions, I was not there, but but Amber is just friends with everybody. And Amber went with Tanisha, because Tanisha was hosting. 
and Danny had just said something like very rude to her about how, oh, you're like a clout chaser and you're, you know, you're always here, blah, blah, blah. Like just kind of saying that, you know, she was like riding Tanisha's like dick and being very rude. I was not there, but our, we had a, a mutual friend who was there and he was just like, she was so rude and I couldn't believe how rude she was. And Amber was just like, okay, like didn't want to make a big deal about it. And like, as soon as I heard that, I was just like, Amber is very sweet and very nice, but I'm not so sweet and I'm not so nice. And I have nothing bad against Danny, but she, and I know that she was like younger when, you know, she had said all these things and like we've all done and said things when we were younger. But I just really think that she needs to own up to being a bitch to Amber and like apologize to Amber and if she had that if she did that then sure I would totally be on her podcast um but yeah that's really about it so no didn't sue oxygen no didn't get millions um yeah I've never sued anybody and I think that that rumor came from people like you know the whole thing with bad girl nation is that rumors Okay, so I had a teacher one time when I was in school who took a thing of toothpaste and she squeezed it out. And she was like, this is what a rumor is. Somebody starts a rumor and then when once you squeeze it out, you can't put it back into the toothpaste. Like the toothpaste will not go back in there and the rumor is not going back in there. So once there's a rumor, that rumor kind of just is always out there. And like, so people had said that I slept with a producer because I'm just a nice person. I'm nice, I'm funny, I'm I'm like a good person to hang out with. Like I like talking to people and the producers really liked me, so did the crew. And the way that they had edited me was they really, you know, made me the star of the show and they really made me this big character and they showed me in all lights. They showed me being funny, they showed me being sad, they showed me being crazy, like they showed me being regretful, they showed me in all lights. They didn't do that with all of the girls. Like with, um, Brandy. So Brandy's like not my favorite person, but Brandy is hysterical. And they didn't show that. Like they really only showed a fraction of Brandy's personality. They really kind of made her like the token crazy girl. So they had thought that I was like slept with the producer, which I didn't. And no matter how many times, and this is the thing, like you don't have to believe me, but if you just like know me as a person, I'm not somebody who sleeps with random people. I'm not somebody who kind of like craves attention like that. And the producer liked me because I was a good person. Like if we were all in the club and the girls wouldn't go home, they'd be like, hey, Chris, like, can you get the girls together? And I'd be like, hey guys, come on, let's go, let's go. And they'd be like, thank you. Like there was a fight when we were doing the photo shoot. And I was like, let's stop and let's do this at home. And one of the makeup artists was like, thank you. I was like, it's okay. Like, you know, so people just liked me. I think that's like why that kind of rumor started. I think the whole thing with suing was that I believe I had mentioned that I was going to sue Christina. I don't know if I said that. I like can't really remember, but I think I said that like when she threw bleach on me and people really took that as I was like really going to sue her. I don't even know. Did I say that or I say I was going to call the police? I don't know. I didn't do it either, but um, yeah. So that's really it. That's the story. That's the juicy gossipy story. Wow. All right. So yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.